Boys and girls, hi there. Welcome to another episode of Adventures with Paul H. in e-waste, treasure, cyberdex, my tech explorations and learnings, and, if budget allows, the occasional take part. Today's victim, I mean item, is something very much my style. This plastic mysterious monolith is something very cool. It is an electronica MK52 uh, programmable calculator or Electronica MK Bitishadva. Thank you, Google Translate Russian lady voice. You never fail to not disappoint. It is something very cool inside. It uses a little VFD screen, which is also quite nice. This is the first item I've got that has a VFD that actually works. And it's got a very much a uh, retro feel to it. But it works, which is really cool. I'm going to turn off my lights and help you, let you appreciate it better. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, 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 VFD goodness. Mm. Love it. Very cool. But what makes this thing really interesting is that it's, well, for me at least, I don't know, maybe calculate people know already. They're like, yeah, 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 we, we all know this. Why are you telling us this? It uses something called um, reverse Polish notation. So the way we normally input into a calculator is we use um, we use brackets and we use bod mass. Reverse Polish notation is a way of inputting that basically eliminates brackets. That's the short explanation. Reverse Polish notation, I only learned about it when I got this thing and discovered it and did a bit of research and then tried it out. And it turns out reverse Polish notation is easier done than said. So I'm not going to bother explaining it. You can go and look at another video or, you know, Google it or something or open a simulator. But today we're going to take this apart. Um, before that, there's a lot about this I don't know yet. Um, you know, I've, I know now that that function there is clear EEPROM. I know this is the on off button. And the rest here is a bit of a mystery so far. I can guess, okay, that's the upper function, that's the lower function. There's no equal sign. And that's because we're using reverse Polish notation. This, I think what, I don't know if this is like a, it's not even enter, they call it like push or pop. You know, there's all kinds of new terms that I'm coming, starting to get used to that express how you actually use reverse, reverse Polish notation on a scientific calculator. The name, I don't think that this is something that just was used in the Soviet sort of states um, because of, you know, the word Polish. It was made by a Polish guy in the 1920s. And um, HP calculators also use reverse Polish notation. The, the benefit of it is that you can do calculations much faster because you don't have to do so many keystrokes. Yeah. Okay. But... The cool thing about this calculator is that I get the feeling just from what I'm looking at the internet that there's a lot of emotion for these kind of calculators in, you know, a lot of people grew up using them and judging by how much content there is on the internet and how much dry Russian humor, it seems that there really is a lot of feeling for these things. There's also a lot of crowdsourced documentation and this calculator is not, is one in a long, long series. There are many others that came before it, and there were a few that came after it, I think. I think there was one more. But if you look at the, the Wikipedia page for Soviet calculators, there's a long list of red blotted out um, listings because there's no content about it. And it's, it's a huge list. So there's a lot of calculators they made. And for the Electronica series, there's also, a, that's a really huge long list which is a fascinating world to know about. And with it, a lot of content, lots of videos in Russian, lots of documentation. And interestingly, errorology. Yegagologia, uh, something like that. Errorology, the study of Soviet era calculator hacks. And it's, it's a thing that obviously they had so many errors and so many funny little features and unintentional um, bugs that this became people's hobbies to actually figure out 
what these bugs were and make Easter eggs and and document them and and you know aerology stuff appeared in Soviet era magazines so it's it's very interesting there's a lot of emotion for these things okay I'm talking too much now so anyway the oh the final thing which I think is pretty cool is in 1988 this went into space well because if their systems broke down then they could calculate trajectories and stuff using you know a, one of their calculators looks like it so uh, I'm gonna switch this off pop their batteries out and hope that it doesn't bite us because I don't know what voltages the VFD runs at but I'm pretty sure it runs at negative voltages you know but I doubt we'll have high voltages in here right famous last words perhaps hope not in we go the reason I'm taking, I'm actually not just taking it apart for the sake of taking it apart. I have a, oh, one thing I didn't mention, and this is why I'm taking it apart. It has funny little ports here. Some of these were expansions that were never made. Ta-da, nothing. Something here, ta-da, almost something, but they kind of lost their initiative. Ah. There's a programmable port and you put cartridges in here like this thing doesn't have enough memory for it's programmable so it's got like you know this you can program stuff but they had cartridges that go in here with special functions and games and, and all kinds of stuff but mostly just boring special functions and those cartridges are really expensive by now you know you think game boy is game boy and nintendo and uh what is it sega cartridges are expensive Ooh, you haven't seen the ones that go in here. Maybe I speak under correction. Anyway, let me get a bit of screwdriver. Oh, I'm kind of excited. Anyway, back to why I want to take it apart. I want to get figure out what's going on underneath because I want to stick a logic analyzer oh it's already coming apart I want to stick a logic analyzer there and see what's coming out while it's running and then figure out if we maybe could you know send something in and probe like I want to hook an Arduino up to it one day so this is the first step the other thing is I could also replace the foam there's a apparently there's foam in here which gets sticky after a while and the keys do feel a bit heavy like they don't you know there's a eh, eh, nothing satisfying so maybe there's some desiccated foam in there i just want to do this very carefully there we go something's moving oop, oop, oop. Ooh, hello 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 oh wow should I change my accent for the day? Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to look at the MK. Sorry. <laughs> I like I love his channel. And I don't speak French. And he's speaking English. So I need to take my hat off to him. <laughs> but there we go. Wow. That's actually quite interesting. Focus. 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 Hey, that's um quite a modern looking little cap in there. I'm gonna comment. Yeah, that one too. That that's not old. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I see that looks a bit too shiny. The other stuff though is definitely ancient, but it's actually preserved beautifully. I see a lot of flux here left over, but otherwise it's actually quite beautifully made focus 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 man i should have used my samsung save this webcam come on camera there we go oh hi everybody can you uh, donate to my paypal so i can get a better camera ha <laughs> joking but not really there's the minship 
I'm... I don't know what I was expecting, but it's... It's really quite beautiful. It's definitely old, but it's really, really quite, quite lovely. And where is the... Where did the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the port. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Let's go a bit deeper. Let's see what's on the other side. I love tech points like this. I used to watch them a lot. Now I'm doing them. Pretty cool, huh? Maybe I should move in the camera a bit closer. Is that a chip down there? Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that there and that there is an epoxy. Oh, there also. You know, it's my eyes that are, are not doing the focusing. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. A little... That's not even epoxied. Okay, it's maybe epoxy, just white. But there's a little chip there underneath a very partial blob there. And a bigger one over here. Focus, please. Focus. Over there. And another bigger one that's hiding underneath there. I didn't notice it. I'm so busy worrying about making a YouTube video that I'm not enjoying the roses. Wow. I have never seen one of those before. I know they exist, of course, but it's different to actually see one in real life. Exquisite. Okay. I'm also very scared because I've spent so much time waiting for this thing to arrive from the Ukraine. It would be a pity to break it so early in the game. But I'm not an idiot, am I? Okay. Alright, I can hear that we got some loose keys now. Let me just pop the, this out. Yep. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right, now maybe there's something a bit dangerous. The ribbon cable over here is still attached to something. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's just flip it over. Da -da 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 -da. Whoa. Okay. There we go. All right. the VFD, the functions, and here is the actual keypad with little clips. Um, this looks like someone's surfaced this. This isn't foam, this is some kind of thin but modernish looking, very thin bubble wrap. Hmm. I wonder if it's worth going in. I'm afraid of popping these off. And so knowing that this is not yellowing, orangey sort of rotten foam, but rather something that somebody serviced, I'm not sure if I want to go further. But we're all here, so let's go. Let's see. Eesh, I hate these clips. They love to just pop off permanently. Hey, Oop. 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 Okay. I mustn't be a wuss. Not so bad. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Alright, but there is a lot of leftover foam here. What has been done here? This is... Someone's either... S this is not Soviet-era plastic. Um, but this is, this, like, nasty sort of foam here. 
But what is nice is that it's un at least it's under a there's a plastic membrane that's facing down. So this kind of gunk here seems to be on the surface, sealed by like a plastic layer. So that's quite nice. So I could theoretically clean it. Yeah. Anyway, I also don't want to mess up the the order of the buttons. So I'm not gonna do them too much, but yeah, sure. Take one out. Okay, I don't have my tweezers here, but yeah. Sorry, this is not very professional. I should have got my mise en place a bit better. They're plastic, plasticky little things. They don't. So I'm surprised they're not faded more. They're actually quite, you know, still the same color. Not even, yeah. It's funny. It's like two. It's two bits of plastic. I don't know why they put this. Is that a like a gasket or something? It's like, what is it? I don't know what it is. It's like weird. It's plastic, but it's like I don't know what it is. It's funky. I don't know what that's actually for. It's like they've got two types of plastic, and then some of them are a different color. Why is it sticking? Oh. Yeah. So it's... It's like two types of plastic, but I don't really see the purpose. And R uh, unless... R uh, unless it's... It's the letter. Let me just see. That one has got a black letter, so this one has a... Oh, it's... This one has a black letter too? Ah, so... Wow. These are really... Hardcore then. So it's two types of plastic. We are only doing this recently with dual color 3D printers. But I didn't think that they would make something so small and so precise when they could have just, you know, screen printed a letter on. But actually, it's molded inside. Wow. Soviet technology. They don't make them like they used to. That's pretty. I'm impressed. That's really cute. Hmm. Okay, that's uh, the end of the tour. This is fun. This is my first little proper take apart. And now the trick is to put it back together. But I think I'm going to you know, scrape off some of this, this gunk, foamy gunk that's left over here. And that should leave it functioning a bit better, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But certainly the buttons do feel a little bit you know, sticky. Well, that's the end of it. Everybody, thanks for watching my first video and subscribe to my channel as always. Bye.